Ah, oh, hello, and welcome back to Cuz I Said So, episode four, three. Three. Is it three? Three. Episode three. Oh, how time flies when you're having fun. Okay, we're going to start off this episode with a little roll call. Alex Bennett, <clears throat> here. Um, Emily, Madeline, we're, we're here. Content Kim. <whistles> Kimothy. <laughs> Kimberly. Kimmy. <laughs> come out, come out wherever you are. Oh, I know where she's at. She's picking up her gluten-free banana bread, obviously, as one does during the time, the one hour that they have the podcast room booked. Why not spend 15 of it picking up your gluten-free banana bread? <laughs> like, mom, 15 minutes before this, she's like, I'm going to just be like a little bit late because I got to pick up this gluten-free banana bread. Okay, one, she's been eating this gluten-free banana bread every day since she's been in New York. She's a creature of habit. She finds a place and she likes something on the menu, and my goodness, the girl will be back every day to pick up that same exact item. Um, I think we have, like, obsessive personalities in that sense. I got that trait from her. Why the, why the banana bread, you might wonder? You know, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, she takes a lot of gluten-free allergy tests, like a <laughs> lot of them, like one a week type thing. And if she took 10 and even one of them said, you've got a gluten allergy, she's like, I'm definitely gluten intolerant. So she eats gluten free. She's going to listen to this and be like, Alex, but, but mom. But don't you eat gluten free too? Yeah, I eat gluten free too. So I am the pot calling the kettle black, <laughs> uh, which I've never understood that saying. I like this saying better. Don't throw stones at a glass house. That, that analogy makes like a little bit more sense to me. What but does that mean? Like don't. If you're that, why make fun of that? Like, or if you're, if you do that. Don't throw stones at a glass house. Like, don't uh, – Google it. Guys, Google what it means. <laughs> um, I'm going to do the intro without my darling co-host because, well, she's picking up food. Time's a ticking. Time is ticking. So we're on YouTube. Hello, YouTube. We're also on, like, everywhere you listen to a podcast. We're on all those platforms. Like, comment, subscribe. Send it to a friend. I don't know. Do what you guys do with those things. Um, we appreciate the ratings, though. Thank you for that. Gazoon tight. <laughs> um, I, don't, I don't know. Uh, there's a couple housekeeping things I want to review with you all. The first one is I really want an intro song for this. And here's here's my inspo for the intro song. Okay. It's it's The Temptations meets Stevie Wonder, specifically signed, sealed, delivered, meets Nelly, hot in here, dun, dun, meets Lil Wayne, any of his songs. And then you take the four of those, mash them, mash them all up. Yep, that's four guys, women power. And boom, intro song for Cuz I Said So. It might take a little bit to make that happen, but catch us in 2022 with an intro song. Second thing is, dear mothers, let's discuss the difference between a period and an exclamation point. Earlier today, my mom put up a pretty cute photo on our Instagram story. And she's been working really hard on social media. So I messaged her and I'm like, mom, cute photo. And she responds back, thanks, period. Okay, the period insinuates I'm mad at you. It's like the difference between thanks, exclamation point, is like thanks. Thanks, period, is thanks. So moms, try to implement that into your texting routine. Periods are excited. No no punctuation is kind of like all good. Like, you know, I'm just... I'm a, I got, you kind of got a cool vibe if you don't use punctuation. But if you put a period, that is, I'm mad at you. Now, if you're really mad at us, feel free to use frequent amounts of periods. That is completely fine. The next thing I want to discuss with you all is on this episode, I feel like we're going to go deep. My mom used to have this vision of my life. And it was like I had three kids, but I'm 28. And by the time I was 28, I think she thought I would have three kids. I would live literally next door to her and she would babysit those three kids. And I've realized I kind of uprooted our lives, got us both the job, moved us to New York. And, and none of those things that she wanted me to do happened because they weren't, they weren't my path right now. They're definitely going to be my path one day. I want to have four, I want to have four kids. Um, 
So that's, that's going to be my path, but it's not what she thought would happen. So I want to ask her about that. Just some light, casual conversation. The other thing is, I realized in the first two episodes, like I talked a lot, so I kind of want her to do a lot of talking. Um, so, so when she gets here, we're going to get, boom, right into it. And I think she's actually here. So, hey, cuz I said so, episode three, let's get to it. Mom, I have to say, I cannot believe that it's episode three. <laughs> no, I can't either. I feel like we started this yesterday. And here's my thoughts on it. Okay. After reflecting. So on my way here, I listened to episode two. Well, I listened to episode one and two. Because Alex, it takes about 20 minutes to walk here for you? Yeah, it's a 20 okay. minute walk. I used to jam to the music, but that gets a little old, especially if there's not a new song out. So I've been putting on podcasts. And today I thought, well, why good. don't I just listen to us? That's good. And it reminded me that doing a podcast is entirely harder than I thought it's much harder than you think you before you do it you go I have a thousand things I want to talk about mm -hmm. and then you go okay what are we going to talk about and and really what am I what am I going to say about that that comes off clear <laughs> yes and yeah. what do I want people to get out of it that's right yeah so this time we have no notes we've been over planning probably to a fault but that that's the way you I think anything works is you plan a lot you, you have to iterate and you have to figure out what works for you and this time we're trying are we pivoting we're pivoting okay, yes like Kim that. loves the word pivot mm -hmm. this is a pivot okay. episode three is like not planned I have a couple notes on my phone mm -hmm. but it's pretty much um, a shoot from the hip okay that's so, what you're good at yeah but we're gonna turn this a little bit on you because what's oh. no not in a bad way I noticed that I probably do most of the talking, or at least I did in episode two. Okay. And I want to know, like, is there anything you want to say? Is there anything you want to talk about? Well, that's that whole thing of I have a thousand things to talk about, and now you're just throwing it at me? Well, I just didn't know. Like, one of my friends texted me and was like, trust your mom. Like, I feel like you, every time she starts to talk, you're, like, tensing up. Or not tensing up, but you're like, oh, uh. And it's like, she was like, Alex, do you not trust your mom? And I was like, I do. I actually, there's there's nobody, like, not one person I would rather do this with than you. Oh, that's sweet. And I realized, too, I was like, I've looked up to my mom my whole life. Like, when I look at you, I think of stability. Like, I think of all these things. And then we get in this podcast room, and I'm like, what is she going to say? No, you've been very nervous about everything I've said. I know. Yeah. I'm and walking on eggshells this last month. And I and that's not fair to you. No, it's really not, but I'm 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 getting through it. Well, that's not no, that, <laughs> and see I don't like that. So today, mom, what do you want to, what what is something that you would want to talk about? Well, I love to talk about all the the fun things that are coming up around here. I mean, I get so excited in New York City. All the windows that are coming up for the holidays. I love to decorate for the holidays. And my husband hates it. You don't want to talk about this. <laughs> no, I do. Wait, it's funny because it's so cute because you love New York City and you have a ton of energy. Like you can sleep one hour and you're the most energized person I know from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Yeah, and you, you all you want to do is go look at these windows, go to these certain coffee shops, mm -hmm. go to a play. Like, you're so cute in New York because you want to do everything. Yeah, so I'm going to tell that story, too. I bought a ticket to go to a play by myself, which is not weird because I'm here by myself. That's a little weird. Not really. And so I was going to go see uh, To Kill a Mockingbird, but then Alex was being hard on herself and was going to make us re-record a podcast that night. So I had to give away my ticket. Well, everyone in the office was like, you only have one ticket? <laughs> well, I'm like, yeah. And I said, why wouldn't you want to go by yourself? And they're like, that'd be weird. And then who am I going to talk to you afterwards about it? I'm like, anyone else that maybe have gone, has gone to see it. You've been, okay. So no one took my ticket. And we didn't even use the podcast that we did that night because Alex didn't like it either. So we had to come in the next day and re-record. So I missed my play for nothing. Sorry, Mom, but that's <laughs> going to happen a couple more times. If the, Hey, if the podcasts aren't good, we got to redo them. It's, I know. It's I our agree, craft. I agree, like, I agree. It's a reflection of who we are. Now, back to you buying a solo Broadway ticket. Mm -hmm. I think that is hilarious because I will go to dinner alone. I'll go to a movie alone. You cannot catch me going to a Broadway play alone. I think that's adorable. You've been to a concert before by yourself? I'd rather go to a concert or something than a movie. I'd feel scared in a movie by myself. And you wouldn't feel scared at a Broadway play or a concert? No, it's live and alive. Yeah. Yeah. What concert did you go see by yourself? Um, uh, Rod Stewart in Las Vegas. 
That is so cute. Mom, and the girl next to me was by herself too. That because her know. husband was in a meeting or something, and so she was young. And I was like, all, all the girls kind of rushed the stage. And I said, if you go up there and give me your phone, I'll take your picture. That's so. But mom she didn't of get you. the nerve to go up and do it until it was too late. Tell us like your three favorite things. Like what what makes you so excited in life? Well, just being around my family makes me pretty excited. Yeah, right? Just whenever you and Michael are in town, I'm like, yay, and Graham. My and Kristen too, yeah. My mm-hmm. uh, my mom, uh, my mom loves my brother's girlfriend. Yeah, I do too. Like she's awesome. I um, love your husband too. No, well, of course, yeah. yeah. But we're married, so he's he's solidified. But my brother's <laughs> girlfriend looks a lot like if she was sitting here, she's like the third member of the family. But you get so happy if all four of us are home. No, I'm so happy. You are so excited. Yeah. That is your Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. So that that's number one. What is number two and three that makes Kim happy? Uh, traveling. I love to travel. Mm-hmm. And I love the holidays. And that's why I love to go see all of Rockefeller Center and all the windows. I love that. Mm-hmm. Well, you're not getting anything for Christmas. Why? Because the, <laughs> because because there's like a shortage and there's also a shipping shortage of everything. What's it called? Their supply delayed. Like, yes, but a mom, su- supply chain. Supply chain. Yeah, it's not good. Mom, what? It, why you can't just declare like no Christmas? She can. Yeah, I can. <laughs> she can and she will. I will say. So the only way that my kids get anything for Christmas is if they still act like they believe in Santa. I they I do. still, mom, I still very much believe in Santa. Good. I remember though we were sitting in a movie on Thanksgiving and it started hitting me and I thought is he real and then I kept looking over and I said mom I can't decide if Santa's real and dad was like shh we're watching a movie we were in the theater I said dad I can't decide if Santa's real and he said if you don't believe he's if you don't believe that he's real he's not ever going to come <laughs> so I still believe yeah. every time that Santa is real can- and we still put out cookies we put out milk the whole thing so we so when they were young and in kindergarten or uh, when Alex and Michael were young and at preschool they would send home reindeer food which would be glitter with oatmeal and some other stuff in it and they would take it out at night and they would put it out on the driveway for the reindeer when they came so we've just kept doing that and even as they gotten older they they all including my husband joe take the a big container each of the food and they take it out and now they just get in a fight and they throw it at each other so it's all over the we'll do a whole we'll do a whole sewed on christmas yeah so you so you're not giving out any christmas presents well, if you all don't tell me now where I can order them, then I'm not. And I keep asking, and no one's answering me. You haven't asked me one time what I want for Christmas. You want me to tell you right now? Yeah, I put it in the family group text, and everyone just ignores me. I want a long coat. But I think you're going to need that coat before December. I'll accept my Christmas gift prior to Christmas. But then you're going to say, since I don't have anything to open, you could get me this. No, I'm not going to do that anymore. I'm older than that, Mom. Okay. All I want is... I'll, actually, you know what? This is going to sound so cheesy, and people are going to be like liar ever since COVID literally all I want is like to watch Christmas movies and to hang out with the family liar no (laughs) I'm kidding (laughs) okay well what else do you want to talk about you get to pick well give me a couple of prompts and I'll tell you what I what I want to go with well I mean here's so I was thinking here's one of my things I wrote down okay you say it and I'll tell you if you prompt it I might go with something else but it might give me an idea so okay okay so here's here's the main basis of what I was thinking we if you think about our life Six to eight months ago, you were living in Oklahoma, and I was coming home to make TikToks of you. Mm -hmm. And I would just film you in your element at home. Maybe we were going out to dinner or something in Oklahoma City, but we just lived life there. Fast forward to now, this was my dream to work here. Mm -hmm. But ironically, like, you're how I got here. You're what made me stand out was, like, me, me filming my mom and my relationship with you. And things completely changed. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have to think about where you came from to realize where you've gotten. And I wanted, I wanted, one of the things I wanted to ask you on the off chance you didn't know what you wanted to talk about (laughs) (laughs) was, does your life look like what you thought it would at this point? Is this where you thought you'd be at 58? Oh, absolutely not. No, I did not think I'd be here at 58, but it's um, been an incredible gift. Like, and first of all, I want to say this. It's not because of me that you got here. It's because I think it's the way that you edit everything that makes it so great. Like I could say anything and you could edit it, make it look pretty good. That's nice. That's good. If you just had that app to put makeup on me, it'd be good. (laughs) You don't need makeup. You're beautiful. People, everybody, this would be a great time to give 
a skin care tip because it's the most asked DM. No, I ha- no, I've been working on it. I'm going to post it. A video? As, yeah. As soon as somebody helps me. Um, Stay tuned. I'll see, help you, Kate. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, Stay Madeline tuned. will yeah. help you make it. But mom, give, give, a, give like a one tip to everybody because everyone always says you look so good for your age. Like what's one you can give right now? I just think it, that young people don't wash their face at night and take their makeup off. And that's huge to wash your face and get your makeup off. That helps a lot. Growing up, my mom always said, never go to bed with your makeup on. And the first thing in the morning, wash your face. I don't care how tired you are. Yeah. Wash that face. face. That does help. Now I can't go to sleep. No, you feel so gross. So gr- you got to wash your face. Girl, wash your face. I hated that book. I couldn't get past page, page five, but wash your face. <laughs> That's not nice. Well, I'm sorry to the author. I don't even know who wrote it. <laughs> I, I didn't think it was very good, though. Well, it wasn't good for you, but a lot of people probably got a lot out of that book. Yes, and for those people, I think that's incredible. Mm -hmm. That's good. So, no, I think um, having your life change like that when you don't really expect it or have anything. I mean, like, I really didn't do anything to get here. It's just kind of a gift. Yeah, there's a lot to be thankful for. A lot to be thankful for. And I've had a lot of my friends sending me inspiring quotes. That is so nice. Yeah, it's really nice. And those are really helpful. Like, when they say text me and say really positive things and... um, and just really have your back out of the blue. Those that's that's the most incredible thing because sending reaching out to people when they don't expect you to is huge. Like just out of the blue, reaching out to someone and saying, "Oh, I saw this quote. It made me think of you." Or "You go, girl. You're doing a great job. I'm so proud of you for doing that." I've gotten some of those. Like getting outside of your box is huge because this is all very outside of my box. That's so nice. It's so nice. I w- the one thing I want to say is maybe pause right now and send a nice text message to somebody mm-hmm. and tell them that they're doing a good job. Like if you have a friend that recently moved or somebody that started something new or a new job, shoot them a text and tell them you're, pr- you're, you're proud of them because, Mom, I agree. Like ever since we've started this, I'll do like gratitude meditations and I will sit there and bawl my eyes out the whole time. And, and I'm and it's ha- it's it's out of happiness, but I think of all the people that are supporting us mm-hmm. and and – are cheerleading us and I'm like overwhelmed and then and then you start to think like do I even deserve that in like that's just imposter syndrome okay here's my other question mom so do you find anything about this job frightening or like is there fear around it for you putting yourself out there the comments failing like any of that yeah so putting the social media posts out there is stressful because it's taken me a long time to get it but it doesn't scare me now that I've done it but what does, I mean, yeah, the fear of failure is kind of scary. But at the same time, I feel like if I give it my all, I can't be afraid. No, I think that's the best thing ever. If you give it your all, mm-hmm. then there's nothing to be afraid of because the rest of it's not in your hands. Right. Are you afraid of anything? Like, do you have a fear doing all this? Yeah. Uh, my fear translates into pressure, though. I'm, I'm always afraid of failure and I'm always afraid of not... This is interesting. I'm always afraid of not giving it my all. Like, I'm always like, did you give it every single thing you could today? But sometimes I end up pushing myself too hard and I know about myself that's a detriment for me. Like, I know my brain needs to work and then I need to take a break for an hour and then I need it to work again. And sometimes when that hour break comes, I'll power through it, Mm -hmm. even though I know That means that the second half of the day will be less productive. So I end up doing a little self-sabotage because for me, hours don't translate into success. It's I need to take, I need to have more productive moments and less like, I'm not working manual labor hours. Manual labor hours are not creative brain hours. They're separate. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know. I've heard you say like, you feel like your, your time is like this and it may seem like you're not working all day, but you've worked really hard in that amount of time and that can be exhausting. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, but you've said that to me, you've said. Are you working hard enough or smart enough? Yeah. Yeah. I feel like you had this very specific idea for me in life, sort of similar to the life I guess you could say you lived, where I'm 28 now. You you wanted me to already have kids, where I, where I had kids and I live in Oklahoma. Would you say that's true? A little bit. I still wanted you to, to have a career that you liked. You did? Yeah. Okay. So Because I know that you're busy. You like to have things like that I mean I still want you to have kids right and if you don't live near me I'll just keep going back and forth yeah yeah so right after I graduated college a year later I moved out to LA with my husband Graham Mm -hmm. and I didn't feel like you liked me moving away would Mm -hmm. you say that's true yes so my question is now that I'm here in New York are you happy that I'm doing this or do you still think that there was some part of me that should have still lived in Oklahoma, still had a kid, still done that whole path that like I think you saw for me. A lot of your friends are doing that right now. And I think that people who do that all together 
get closer and have kind of that lifelong friend that way. But you're not the only one that's not doing it. So you wanted that aspect of it for me. Yeah. It's kind of like what what you did through college. Right. I mean, how you got to meet all your friends and do the whole thing. Do the thing. Yeah. Yeah. So the time, the timeline on that was the same because we were doing the same thing. We had shared life experiences. So that makes sense. And I see exactly what you're saying. So on a different level. I mean, I want you to live by me eventually. Would you rather us live by you knowing I wanted to live in New York my whole life? Like, would you still rather me live by you? No, I think you should get it out of your system. But what if I wanted to live in New York forever? That'd be fine. You don't seem excited about that. I'm not excited about it, but if that's what you wanted to do, what am I supposed to do? Okay, let me phrase it differently now. So the TikTok (laughs) that like took my mom and I off, I guess. The first one I ever really posted was my hair was dyed blue on the bottom, which I do yearly. I love dyeing my hair a color. I also have some tattoos on my wrist. Which you know I hate. Which I know you hate, and you also hate the blue hair. Mm -hmm. You've always hated the colorful hair. What do you think about, like, that being a form of expression for me, and you you absolutely hating it? I think it's, um, I don't get it. I think that the hair thing's one thing, it's temporary. The tattoo that's permanent just scares me. Why? Like, I look at these, and I've I've wanted them since probably I was 21-ish. And That's what your friends tell me. I absolutely love them. But that's ink going into your body. Aside from the fact that you think it's poisoning my bloodstream. That's what I think. So that's why I don't like it. You also think they're ugly, though. Like, you don't like them. You you and Dad always said growing up, if you get a tattoo, I'm cutting you off. I obviously... Don't, There's nothing they to don't cut pay off me now. now so she gets that's, that's when I got the tattoos when yeah. I was off the payroll. Yeah. Um, but why, like, why was that? Because I just don't know why you would want to do anything to your pretty body that God gave you. Like, why would you put something on it? I don't know. But you don't care if other people have them, just me. No, just you. Well, you're my daughter. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's interesting. I no, I just, I mean, I just don't know. I don't get it. That's all. I'm just old. I mean, I'm old school on that. I'm very old school on that. I do not get it. But what I think I'm trying to get out of you is do you take it personally? That you're doing that? Yes. Like, do you take that as a reflection of you at all? Or are you like, oh, there's Alex again, just expressing herself? No, I just don't get it. You just add, you just add, are like, I don't understand. It just goes over my head and I don't get why anyone does it. You don't understand it at all? At all. I just think this is one of those things where we view it differently. Like, growing up, it was always embedded into my head. Like, you just wouldn't get a tattoo. There was just certain things you wouldn't do. But then the older I got, the more I was like, wait, Alex, like the human being Alex... I love the expression of a tattoo, um, but we're not we're not going to agree on that. We've never agreed on that. There's, but there is something else I want to talk to you about. Totally different. So, mom, a girl reached out that wants to have you on her podcast, mm-hmm. and you sent it to me yesterday, mm-hmm. and I was so excited about it. Let me tell you why. Because she is a strong woman. She's divorced, and she said her divorce was kind of what empowered her to have change in her life. Yeah, she's had a lot of success from it. I think she's learned a lot about it. I think to it was, face her fears. A turning point. Mm-hmm. And she said that she'll either have me and you on the show or just you. Mm-hmm. And I want to tell you, I want it to just be you because I think, I think you're like a rose that hasn't completely blossomed yet. Does that make sense? Like, uh-huh. I think you have so much to offer. Like, I think you're powerful. I think you're strong. I think you're all these things. I think like you and this woman would have a fabulous conversation. I think I'd bring absolutely nothing to the table. I might be a detriment (laughs) and I think you should go and do it. And I would love to see you like go with this girl and be a powerful woman. Well, that's pretty sweet. Thank you. But also she has daughters too. So she gets the, but uh, the daughters aren't going to be there. No, it's going to be Kim. You're going to go. Okay, we'll see. (laughs) So we're going to have a question of the week for the hotline because I love the question of the week. Yes, we are going to, Mom. And guess what next week is? What? Oh, Thanksgiving. Yeah. (laughs) So we're going to put out the episode next week on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're shaking your head no, but we're going to do it. Yeah, yeah, we are. And why are we putting it on Wednesday? Because Thanksgiving is on Thursday. Well, so when the people are in the kitchen... Cooking, they can listen. Yes, and you hope every daughter... Cooks in the kitchen with their mama. And helps. And helps. Yes. So we're going to have a Thanksgiving. Don't be off seeing all your friends and hanging out and doing that. Oh. Sit in the kitchen with your mom and dad and cook. When I come home for the holidays, Kim hates it if I go socialize. You do it every time. Yeah, but now we're coworkers. No, because you, this is what you say. You say, I can't wait to cook in the kitchen with you guys. And then it's just Joe and I. And you and Michael are off doing your things. And I'm like, that's sweet. 
they're going to go see all their friends and they're not going to hang out with us. And they're coming in from out of town. Thanks a lot. And now that we're co-workers and we see each other all the time and you live part-time in the same city as me. I still want you to show up and cook. I'm just going to go socialize. I'm just <laughs> kidding. I'm, I'm going to cook because I want to learn how to make some recipes. Yeah, you say that every year. I know. Let's see if I do it this year. I'll have Instagram to keep me accountable. Okay. Okay, so the hotline question is, what does your family do that's funny every year? So, for instance, if or, you're... Or your funniest... Memory. Memory. Something funny. We want you to make us laugh. So yeah. if, you're, if your grandma always asks if you're single and um, do you have a boyfriend yet? One year, pivot. One year my grandma gave my brother an inflatable girlfriend for Christmas. True story. And I got frozen shrimp. I don't think she knows how to listen to podcasts. So I don't like, hi, I Granny. I do not think she understood the blow up girlfriend thing at all. Yeah. He no. was single. And we were like, oh, <laughs> so anything like that, that's a Christmas story. But if that happens at Thanksgiving, just anything that's funny and it has to do with family, call and tell us because we are thankful for our family that makes us laugh. Yes. That's it, Mom. Oh, and one more thing. Really, send that text message to a friend. It can even be as simple as just texting them three heart emojis. Send the text message. And I know on a previous episode, I mentioned that I have phone anxiety and that my therapist thinks I should make a phone call a day. I haven't exactly done that. But one of my friends listened to that episode and she's been calling me. And it's so nice. Like I see her name pop up on my phone and I'm like, oh my gosh, she's thinking about me. She cares about me. So... Everybody listening to this, you could call somebody else and be that friend for them. What's the saying? Be the change you want to see in the world. I should take my own advice. <laughs> when I leave here, I'll call somebody. But you call somebody too. It could even be your grandma. It would, <laughs> ma it would make her day to call your grandma. You can talk about whatever you want. I get it. It's awkward. You talk at the same time. You're like, uh, but what do you do? When do you hang up? But really... I think it does something for the soul to have the phone conversation. So this is your sign. This is a direct sign. I'm literally telling you, make a phone call today. I'm going to make a phone call today. I'll post it on my Instagram story just so you guys can hold me accountable. But make the phone call. Send the text message. Hell, I don't know if you're bored. Tell them to listen to a random podcast called Because I Said So. <laughs> Subtle plug. All right. I love you guys. Have a happy Thursday or whatever day you're listening to this on. Bye. 